A little while ago, I did a video on Windows 9 Edition, a thing that was made by a group called Freeware Sys. Again, I did a whole video about it. If you want to hear about it, you can go and watch that. Well, around the time that I was doing that video, I got an idea. Okay, well, I didn't get this idea. Rather, I stole it from a good friend of mine, Jordan Woolery, on YouTube. I wanted to see if this could be upgraded to a newer version of Windows and see how usable it still is. He did this with Windows 10, probably 1607, if I had to guess, maybe 1703. Windows 10's changed a lot since then, and Windows 11 is now out. So that's what we're going to be doing today. That's it, that's literally it, that's the entire video. This is a stupid idea, but I wanted to try it for fun. Now there are a couple changes to this, mainly the computer I'm using. In the original video I used my Vostro 3550 from 2011, however this laptop actually has an incompatibility with anything newer than Windows 8, where basically the display doesn't work. It's kind of complicated, but the gist of it is I physically cannot use this computer, it is just flat out incompatible. So instead what I've decided to do is use something else. This is a, another laptop that I have laying around. This is a much newer Toshiba Satellite P55W from about 2015. It's a Core i7 5500U with 8 gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive, a 1080p display, Intel Wi-Fi AC, and shipped with Windows 8.1. It's a far a uh, far too new laptop for Windows 7, although the drivers are there. I've installed it on here before, and it has worked just fine. I figured if we're going to be installing Windows 11 on this anyway, we might as well use at least a newer computer rather than a super old one, especially because the hard drive in the Vostro is really junk anyway, and Windows 11 would have been terrible on it to begin with. Anyways, I've had this laptop for a while. I might do a video on it. There is a... Uh, one small issue with it, though. Fortunately, that's why I have a capture card. I don't have to look at any of that. Now there is one other thing with this that I didn't really want to do, but I knew it was probably going to be a thing, and that was that I had to set the system to CSM mode instead of UEFI, because Windows 9 just didn't boot otherwise. So, a bit annoying means that the Windows 11 stuff's going to be screwed up because it won't be UEFI. Normally you can get away with doing Windows 7 and UEFI, at least boot, but this actually just crashed during setup, so I'm guessing there's just something, some incompatibility with the setup. Otherwise, I've installed Windows 9 Edition on this computer, and unlike the Dell, I have not updated this at all. I haven't really changed any settings. This is basically just Windows 9 Edition if you just installed it. I really, I haven't even installed an antivirus on this computer. None of that stuff. It is basically about as pure as you can get. The only thing I've installed, obviously, is I installed all of the drivers. Which was a bit fun because some of the drivers just flat out don't work on this computer since it's just this is a really new laptop and not normally meant for Windows 7. But it works. It'll work for this video. Really the only thing holding this thing back, obviously, is the hard drive, which I just can't do anything about for the time being. But I think that's pretty much about it for this. I mean, this is just Windows 9 edition. I already did a whole video on it if you want to see more about this computer. I figured what I would do is I would set one of the themes on the computer just to see what that would look like on Windows 11. In this case, the StarCraft 2 theme because it's the one with the most visual changes. Including a lot of text and things that are just hard to read. I never really realized how tough it is to read some of the stuff with this font. Anyways, we're going to start with Windows 10. Now you can upgrade from Windows 7 right to 11. Believe it or not, there's actually nothing preventing you from doing that, assuming you've modded your install media so that it doesn't need to check for hardware requirements. The problem is, if you do that, you lose your ability to take your applications and stuff with you. It's literally just files, which is no fun. So we have to do Windows 10 first because that does work. So. Here you go, as you can see we're going to install Windows 10 Pro and we're going to keep everything on it. So yeah, a bit inconvenient, can't go straight from whatever this is to Windows 11, but oh well, what can one do? Now as for why I'm doing this, 
again, I don't really have an idea. I'm not probably going to keep this on here. I'm not going to actually try and use it, but again, mostly for curiosity, I wanted to try it. Anyways, the Windows 10 install definitely took its time. It took about 45 minutes or so, which is about accurate given this is, again, a slow old hard drive. But after waiting, here we are. The upgrade is done. And right away I could tell that the drivers did not uh, translate over because this is not the right screen resolution. Oh, and yeah, it asked for privacy settings that I don't care about. But here we go. That's it. I did the upgrade to Windows 10 actually pretty much perfectly. Other than, of course, missing drivers. Yeah, everything just kind of worked, which is pretty nice. The theme and everything was still set, and even all of the customization settings in Windows 9 were kept over, like the right-click menus, they still had all the same options, and the taskbar was still set to, to the small icons setting. I figured I would install all the drivers again on this, just because, well, it looks nicer. And you can also tell that the taskbar icons have been set to still not combine, so they still have the, they still have the labels. So, yeah, I mean, for the most part, a lot of the customization changes were still here. Now, there's something else with this laptop I forgot to mention, but since you saw the display earlier, and well, one of the other problems with this thing is that the screen likes to... How do I say this? It likes to touch itself. Watch me struggle for several minutes to try and disable it in the device manager. Anyways, the other thing I figured I would do is not connect this to the internet because I do not want to wait for this to start immediately updating itself. It's just, it's not really worth it. That's going to be a thing I'm going to focus on Windows 11. And besides, this is slow enough anyway. Otherwise, I mean, it's about it. This isn't really the main focus of this video. Obviously, a lot of the icons and everything still kept, all the programs still kept. Yeah, actually it was a fairly uneventful upgrade, to be honest. Actually, there is some things. The theme definitely broke when it got upgraded to Windows 10. As you can see, the there's no theming in the Explorer windows and everything, though it kept the mouse cursor and it kept the sounds. You can't hear it, but it kept some of the aspects of the theme. Anyways, it's time for the main attraction. It's time to upgrade this to Windows 11. Once again, I did not want to connect this to the internet at all because it was just going to slow things down. And it's the same stuff. We're going to install Windows 11 Pro, keep all the personal files. Apparently it claims that some apps and features aren't going to work. We'll see if that actually means anything. Now the Windows 11 install is a bit of an interesting situation because it actually took probably about double the time that Windows 10 did to do the upgrade. It bought an hour and a half. And even doing a lot of the setup, it still took its time. Again, I know this would have been better on an SSD, but like I say every time, I'm too broke for that. Jeez, I can't wait to make money off these videos. Anyways, here we are. The theme has again kept itself. The icons and everything are still here. Even the mouse cursor is still here and the sounds and everything are still here. Obviously some of the changes that were in Windows 9 just aren't physically possible with Windows 11, like the taskbar icons being small because apparently Microsoft is focused on removing functionality in Windows instead of adding more. Just the Microsoft way, I guess. The first thing I did was I turned off that stupid touchscreen before it even caused a single problem because I was annoyed about that earlier. Now it's time for the fun stuff. I'm going to connect this to the internet so that I can fully update this because again, it's just kind of not really a reason to not do that. 
And besides, the moment I connect it to the internet, it's just going to automatically do it itself, so I might as well get it out of the way. The nice thing is, as I sort of expected, all of the drivers that I installed on Windows 10 have carried over, which means that just out of the box, this is just a nicer experience. That being said, there still were quite a few of updates and drivers that it wanted to install. So after all that, we're using about 30-ish gigs of the hard drive. Not bad, but it's fine. Something you might have noticed, by the way, is that unlike Windows 10, some of the theming elements are actually back here. There are certain elements of Explore Windows that are black, like the StarCraft theme was. So it, was, it doesn't look very good, because it's kind of a, a hybrid, but um, it's entertaining. Now as for the themes themselves, they're actually still here. This might be a bit ridiculous when I say this, but I genuinely did not know that Windows 11 still supported themes, but turns out they're there. In my defense, I don't use Windows 11, so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, pretty much all of the themes were still here, except for one, and that was the theme that I was using out of the box. The Win7 squared blend whatever is just gone. It's not here. Otherwise, the rest of the themes, for the most part, are still there, and all the wallpapers and everything are still there, even all the sound schemes and everything. I was kind of surprised about this. And all of the right-click menu options on the desktop are still here as well, though most of the shortcuts are broken. They just redirect you to the personalization tab and settings. But some of them are still functioning as they would. Change cursor, for example, still takes you to the ancient mouse properties dialog that's been in Windows for 50 million years. Windows Media Player Legacy is still pinned to the taskbar, which I was a bit shocked about. Again, another program that I'm kind of surprised is still in Windows to this day, given how old it is. It also, as expected, pinned Outlook and Microsoft Store and Edge to the taskbar, but what are you going to do, I guess? And pretty much all the programs that were on this computer before are still here. I was kind of surprised that none of them were going to throw a fit, given that all these programs are ancient, but yeah. Of course, it added all of the built-in Windows crap that comes with Windows these days. So yeah, I think that's it. Honestly, this was not really the most entertaining video I've ever come up with, but oh well. It still actually picks the device up as Windows 9, like it was set to in the other install, although the rest of the mentions of Freeware Assist are basically gone. Yeah, uh, fun idea. Again, much like with Windows 9, I would not recommend this because I still ran a virus scan on this and it still did pick up malware. And I've actually tried using this on this laptop since and it's just, it still has some weird stability problems. So again, if it wasn't already clear, I would not recommend this.